Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be learning about acute kidney injury or AKI. This is also known as acute kidney failure. So essentially AKI is an abrupt reduction in the kidney's ability to do its job which is filter waste products. It is not a traumatic injury to the kidney, it is rather a clinical syndrome with various causes. So AKI may be defined as an increase in serum creatinine and or a reduced urine output occurring in a few hours or days. So if you think about it, the function of the kidney is essentially to make urine. So if there's no production of urine, it means there's something wrong. Now, to understand a kidney failure, we also need to know about creatinine. So creatinine is a product of muscle breakdown that is freely filtered, this is important, across the glomeruli, and little to no creatinine is reabsorbed in the tubules. So to understand this a little bit better, here we have a schematic of a, the functional unit of the kidney, so the nephron. Um, so here we have the glomerulus, um, Bauman's capsule, and into the renal tubules, and the peritubular capillaries on the side. So arrow number one represents filtration. So when we say creatinine is freely filtered across the glomeruli, it means that all creatinine that is arriving here in the glomerulus ends up going through uh, into the tubules. Now arrow number two is reabsorption. So there is pretty much negligible amount of creatinine that is reabsorbed into the body. So essentially what we're getting at here is that all the creatinine that is produced in the body by muscle breakdown should be excreted by the kidneys. And so if you see a rise in creatinine, it means that the kidneys are not filtering it out. And so it's another way to see that there's something wrong with the kidneys. So it is a good indicator of kidney function. And then again, if creatinine increases, it is not being excreted by the kidney which means there's a problem. Now, um, since creatinine is a product of muscle breakdown, there will be a little bit of, of a difference in the normal range for men and the normal range for women. So for men is about 60 to 110, and to, for women, 45 to 90. With that being said, uh, a patient's serum creatinine will be very individual to that patient. Um, so it will essentially depend on their muscle mass because if you have more muscle it means you have more muscle breakdown it means you have more creatinine so let's take Arnold here for example let's say his baseline his creatinine is usually 300 and then another male his creatinine let's say it's 100 so it doesn't mean that Arnold is in severe kidney failure it just means that he has more muscle now, if this patient here had an increase in his creatinine from 100 to 300, then we would be worried. So it is important when diagnosing a, a patient with AKI, it is important to know their baseline. So for the diagnosis of AKI, there are two criteria. We'll have a look first at the creatinine criteria. So you can have AKI stage one, stage two, or stage three. So stage one would be an increase of 1.5 times the baseline. So in a patient where their baseline is 100, if then their creatinine increases to 150, that would be stage one AKI. Or if you don't have a patient's baseline, uh, stage one AKI can be defined as an increase of more than 26 uh, micromoles per liter in the last 48 hours. Now stage 2 would be an increase of 2 times or more the baseline and stage 3 an increase of 3 times or more the baseline. However there is a magic number here 354 where essentially let's take our node. Uh, uh, his was 300 right. Um, if he has an increase of 1.5 which would indicate stage one kidney failure, um, his creatinine would exceed 
354. So he would go straight into stage 3 AKI. So again, stage 3 AKI is an increase of 3 times the baseline or a rise of 1.5 times the baseline to any number above 354. Next, we have the urine output criteria. And then the urine uh, criteria is quite straightforward. Is Because uh, if you think if the kidney is not producing urine, surely there's something wrong with the kidney. So stage 1, uh, urine output uh, less than 0 0.5 milliliters per kilogram per hour for 6 to 12 hours. Stage 2, uh, if this proceeds to more than 12 hours, then stage 3 is a urine output of less than 0 0.3 milliliters per kilogram per hour uh, for more than 24 hours, or no urine production, or anuria, for 12 hours or more. So what causes AKI? We have um, three, three categories, essentially. So we have pre-renal AKI. So pre-renal means before the kidneys. And if we have a look at this image, what comes before the kidneys are essentially the renal arteries, so the blood supply to the kidneys, because blood goes into the kidneys. So anything that will disrupt blood flow to the kidneys would be a pre-renal cause of AKI. Now, intra-renal AKI would be a problem with the kidney itself, so inside the kidneys, and post-renal AKI. So post uh, means after, so after the kidneys. What we have after the kidneys is essentially the ureters. So any obstruction in the urinary tract uh, would lead to post-renal AKI. So let's have a look at pre-renal AKI first. This is the most common type of AKI. And again, before the kidneys will be anything affecting blood flow to the kidneys. So what can cause that? So hypovolemia, if you have low blood volume. A reduced cardiac output, so as seen in heart failure, for example, will mean less blood is going to the kidneys. Renal artery stenosis, or a narrowing of the renal artery, will also mean there will be less blood going to the kidneys. Or an impaired renal autoregulation, which we can see uh, in drugs such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or ACE inhibitors. So again, these all lead to reduced blood flow to the kidneys, um, which ultimately leads to a reduced glomerular filtration rate, which is how fast the kidney filters out uh, waste from our blood. And so if the kidney is not filtering out waste fast enough, we get a buildup of nitrogenous waste in the blood, which is called azothemia. So you might have come across pre-renal azothemia or post-renal azothemia essentially means the buildup of nitrogenous waste in the blood. Now, intra-renal AKI is a problem within the kidneys. So this is a problem with the renal tubules or the glomeruli or the interstitium or the blood vessels, all of, those, all of these components, right? So with the glomerulus, uh, there's an inflammation such as glomerulonephritis, there will be a problem with the glomerulus. Uh, with the renal tubules, uh, we're going to talk about um, acute tubular necrosis, uh, interstitial disease. So in the interstitium is essentially the space between everything. Um, so if there's a problem there, it will also affect the kidneys. And then vascular disease, because we have all these tiny blood vessels all around in our kidneys. So ultimately, intrarenal AKI is when the kidneys lose their ability to filter blood. So in pre-renal that we talked about before, it's lack of blood to the kidneys. Intrarenal, the, the kidneys actually lose their ability to filter blood. Now, intrarenal AKI usually coexists with pre-renal AKI. And we will talk about that in just a bit. So... First, let's talk about glomerulonephritis, which is one of the causes of intrarenal AKI. This is inflammation of the glomeruli. It is often caused by the deposition of antigen-antibody complexes, uh, which then trigger an inflammatory response. Here in this image, it's essentially a, a, a section of the glomeruli. You can see all the convoluted 
capillaries there. And there's a, a big infiltration of white cells. So it shows inflammation. So examples of glomerular uh, conditions that cause glomerular nephritis is post streptococcal glomerular nephritis, um, IgA nephropathy, diffuse proliferative glomerular nephritis. There are a bunch, and these will essentially can lead to the nephritic syndrome, which is where you see blood in the urine and protein in the urine, so hematuria and proteinuria. Now, next we have uh, tubular disease. Um, so the most important tubular disease, which we will be focusing on, is acute tubular necrosis. This is the most common type of intrarenal AKI. And it, essentially, it is due to a prolonged pre-renal AKI. So again, pre-renal, reduced blood flow to the kidney, right? If you have that for a prolonged period of time, this leads to ischemia and injury to the tubular cells. So essentially they will die, there will be necrosis and inflammation. So if we have a look here at this uh, diagram, essentially if we don't have enough blood going into the kidneys, into the glomerulus here, there will be less blood supply to these cells. These are the tubular cells. And they are particularly sensitive to ischemia. So these will end up dying and that will be acute tubular necrosis. Now, tubular disease can also be caused by nephrotoxins. So, for example, uh, aminoglycosides, lead or other heavy metals, uric acid, myoglobin, and other toxins. One thing to take away from this is that dead tubular cells, so we, we went back to the tubules, so the tubular cells will essentially end up blocking the renal tubules because when they die they just fall off into the lumen and these will form epithelial casts and white cell casts that you can see in urine this is a, an example of them they will essentially uh, form the shape of uh, the renal tubule now next we have interstitial disease an example is acute interstitial nephritis uh, it is essentially just uh, the inflammation of the interstitium. This is thought to be caused, <clears throat> this is thought to be a type 1 or type 4 hypersensitivity reaction to some drugs such as NSAIDs or penicillin or thiazide diuretics. So when a patient tells you they have penicillin allergy, uh, this might be one of the consequences of taking penicillin for them. In, in this, in acute interstitial nephritis, you will see infiltration of immune cells um, such as neutrophils into the interstitium, uh, so that's inflammation. Um, but interstitial disease can also be caused by connective tissue disorders or just infection. Next, within still intrarenal AKI, remember these are problems within the kidney, we have vascular diseases. So these are problems with the blood vessels uh, within the kidneys. So an example is uh, vasculitis. Uh, so a type of vasculitis is polyarthritis nodosa. Uh, in this condition, you're going to have immune cell, um, uh, immune complex deposition in the kidneys. And we can see this in this image. Um, so we have the renal artery going in and dividing into all the smaller arterioles. Um, and we can see a lot of these little kind of like dots all around the kidney. That is due to immune uh, complex deposition. Another condition is TTP, which is thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. This is a blood disorder that results in the blood clots forming in small blood vessels throughout the body. And um, yeah, this can lead to kidney damage because if you think of a lot of little blood clots within your kidney, uh, logically, that's very bad. And then he hemolytic uremic syndrome, another example. Uh, this is a condition that can occur when the small uh, vessels uh, in your kidneys become damaged or inflamed. And they can be a consequence of infection as well. Next, we have post renal AKI. This is, remember, a problem after the kidneys. So in the uh, urinary tract. Um, so this is also called post-obstructive AKI. 
you, so you might not always see both Serena AKI. Essentially, an obstruction anywhere in the urinary tract can lead to post renal AKI. So a classic example is renal stones. Now, as we can see here, this is a kidney with multiple different uh, stones in different areas of the kidney. But essentially, a kidney stones can block urine flow. And uh, this will lead to the buildup of, of pressure within the kidney. And so the kidney won't be able to filter out substances. Now, importantly, renal stones need to be bilateral for you to have AKI. Why? So if one kidney is blocked, the other can simply do the job. And so you wouldn't see an increase in creatinine or a decrease in urine production. Hence, you wouldn't have AKI. So renal stones need to be bilateral to cause post renal AKI, unless they are blocking uh, there, let's say, within the bladder and blocking uh, the urethra opening, which I personally haven't seen that happen. Um, so another cause um, of obstruction in the urinary tract is a common one, prostate enlargement. So this will, pretty much every man will, will suffer from this uh, in their lifetime. So if the prostate is uh, enlarged enough, it will compress against the urethra and you won't be able to to excrete urine. Another example could be bladder cancer and uh, yeah, anything that causes an obstruction in the urinary tract. So here's a pathophysiology of how uh, an obstruction leads to AKI. So you have obstruction, you have a back, backflow of urine into the kidney, which is called hyd hydronephrosis. This will increase intratubular pressure and lead to a decreased glomerular filtration rate. Uh, so here, back we're back at this diagram again. Let's say we have a block blockage, not allowing for urinary excretion. Fluid essentially comes back up the tubules, uh, and then here, uh, where filtration is meant to take place, it is simply not going to happen because you're going to have an area that's very pressurized. There will be a lot of pressure within Bowman's capsule, for example, and so blood will not be filtered through and so you have AKI, acute kidney injury. So here uh, is an image summarizing everything that we talked about in this video. Uh, this is a, a great image, I'd recommend you saving this. Uh, it's not my image, I found it in the public domain, but uh, essentially it shows us all the causes of pre-renal AKI, causes of post-renal, causes of intra-renal or intrinsic renal AKI, it's the same thing. And it even shows you where the problem problem is. So pre-renal problem with the blood supply, intra-renal with the kidneys themselves, and then post-renal uh, with the urinary tract. So just a quick uh, quick revision: pre-renal AKI can be caused by hypovolemia or low blood volume, a decreased cardiac output, a decreased effective circulating volume, such as you can see in chronic heart failure or liver failure. Uh, there will be also as well impaired renal autoregulation. Uh, so we talked about NSAIDs and ACE inhibitors, but they have ARBs and cyclosporin as well as examples. Post-renal bilateral urethral pelvic obstruction. So uh, this would be bilateral kidney stones, for example, and uh, a bladder outlet obstruction. Intrinsic, we got glomerulonephritis, tubular damage, so this can be caused by ischemia, as we saw in acute tubular necrosis. It can be caused by sepsis or nephrotoxins. And then vascular, vascular issues such as vasculitis, TTP and HUS, and then malignant hypertension. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. <laughs>